What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. I'm over here at Brenton Manufacturing and we were actually having a conversation in your office yesterday and we were talking about galvanizing before versus galvanizing after weaving. And I wanna bring that conversation to the viewers because I think that's a conversation, it's always kind of gone on, but it's starting to become more and more uh, maybe relevant to the market as you start seeing quite a bit more galvanized after weaving coming onto the market. Let's do this. Let's start off just with very basic. What is the difference between galvanizing before weaving versus galvanizing after weaving? So galvanized before weaving is the, the strand comes in already galvanized. So we galvanize the wire and then we weave it together. Um, galvanized after weaving, they weave the chain link together and then run it through the galvanizing pots. And then you get your two outcomes. Okay. And, and I think the term's probably self self-explanatory, galvanizing before versus after weaving. But so in galvanizing before weaving, it comes in already done. Yeah. So it comes coiled up. We saw some of the coil towers downstairs. Yep. And that's kind of what those are. Nice and shiny and new. Yep. And then they get fed through the weaving machine and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's gonna be there's gonna be folks on either side of this discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure the comments section might have already got started by now. <laughs> but um, you fall on the galvanized before weaving. Correct. Well, I'll start off with like the thing I've heard, maybe not since I was a kid, but for a while, is that galvanizing before weaving. So the strand is already galvanized, but then through the machine that we saw in the review video of the machine, uh, it goes ahead and puts it through that worm drive puts the twist into it. Mm -hmm. What they say is, well, that cracks the galvanizing because it's, uh, it's already galvanized and by bending it, it cracks it. But I can't say that I've ever seen galvanized before weave that rusts at those knuckles. Yeah, and I've, I mean, running this two years with it, we've had no problems with it bending, you know, cracking at the bend. Um, if it did, it would be kind of be a defective wire and we would actually send the wire back to the mill. Um, I've heard the argument is at the cut. Yeah. So when that chain link's cut, it exposes a little bit of the, you know, raw under material that the galvanation, the galvanation didn't penetrate all the way. Um, and that's where they say causes rusting. So that's kind of the, the rust point on GBW. Yeah. The question is though, would that cause failure? No, right? absolutely not. But, and I think that's the point mm -hmm. is that now, could it be unsightly? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe you could, pick that one point out of the whole fence where you see a speck of rust. But in terms of failure, I would say maybe not 0%, but like 0.001% <laughs> chance yeah, pretty close that, that this leads to failure. Yeah. Right. I, I think you're more likely to see failure when we're talking about rust and corrosion at the post ground layer or where the post meets the ground or the concrete if it's raised. Um, but but you do hear that say, well, it's going to rust at each and every tip. One of the benefits, though, I, I see of it is it's incredibly smooth. Yeah. Right. Because it's gal it's already galvanized and run through the machine. Because when you when you watch these machines work, it goes through the worm drive, it goes through a lot. So any any sort of burr that may have been on there gets knocked off anyway. Yeah. But when we were looking at the coils, those coils are incredibly smooth. Yeah. So the process um, when they run it through the galvanizing pot, they have a wiping system, kind of wipes it smooth uh, okay. before it gets coiled up. So yeah, if we we get any that have big chunks of galvanizing on them or spurs or burrs, we'll actually reject those and send those back to the mill and let the mill kind of deal with them, um, gotcha. just because. You know, they cause us problems in our machines and sure. we want to run good wire. Well, it's probably peace of mind too. Yeah, absolutely. That absolutely. way you know you've got really good wire before you even get started. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about galvanized after weaving, I, I think we're probably all familiar. If you've built chain link fence ever, I think you're pretty familiar with the downsides in that those little burrs, they will just rip you to shreds, little thorns that get left on there. I mean, they tear up your coats if it's winter time or shirts or whatever. And um, it just, not a great process really no it's a i've heard from a lot of installers that on the the gaw side that it's a pain to dress you know yep. when you're putting it out in the field uh if you compare the install speeds and you know handling of the chain link i think most people prefer gbw on the install side uh, the GAW, you know, it coats the ends and coats uh, where the cuts are, but when you rack it and stretch it, all those little spots right on where the weaves connect break and exposes. And in tests that have been done, it shows that those, those spots will rust. Um, 
I would say GAW could be better if they stretched it and then ran it through. Okay. You know the galvanizing okay. process. Yeah. Um, just so it's fully expanded, but they don't. They just dip it through, and then when you get out in the field and stretch it, I mean it cracks and causes more spots that can catch you and hurt you. Yeah. And so. Well, yeah. and that's interesting because, like I said, growing up, I'd always heard that galvanizing before weaving had issues there at the not, not knuckles, but where the twists meet. But actually, so the studies show that yeah. galvanizing after weaving actually has issues there. Yeah, and I mean, and we're talking GAW or GBW. Rust isn't going to appear for about 10 to 15 years sure. anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, but when they do start coming up, I mean, they both have 20-year life expectancies. Uh, you can get 25 years out of some of them if they're, you know, dressed properly. Sure. You know, if you're on the coast, on the salt water, you're going to get rusting faster on both. Sure. Um, but in my experience, I... I would rather have the ends of my chain link um, in the knuckles, you know, kind of rust than each weave spot, um, just for my preference. And, and, well, and at where those weaves meet, that almost seems like a higher likelihood of a point of failure, yeah. higher likelihood, because that's, I mean, that's where the stress is. Yeah, all right? the tension. That's where the tension there. is, yeah. Well, there is no tension on the end of the cut. Sure. You know, that's just knuckled over, all the tension is straight up and down now I, I think on either one of them on either side of this i think the the again the likelihood of failure of the fins that comes from rust on the chain link is probably pretty low yeah but you know if if you were to run this thing out it's it'd be interesting to see what the actual lifespan of chain link is you know we we've, we've got some chain link that we installed at the fairgrounds uh, I'll have to go back. My dad's got the records but i want to say it's 62 or 63 that's still there yeah. and now it looks like it was installed in 62 or 63. <laughs> yeah. There is some rust evident on this fence, yes. uh, but it still hasn't led to failure. No. Right? So I think it'd be interesting to see what the true, you know, lifespan of the fence is. 20 years is probably when someone would look at this and say, hey, this, this has got to go. It doesn't look great anymore. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, when we're talking about useful lifespan, I think it's probably a lot more than 20 years maybe. Yeah. So I, I, I think, personally, that the posts would fail yeah. before the chain link's going to fail. Yeah. You know, you put a fence up for 25 years, those rust spots where the concrete meets the ground and mm -hmm. if water got in any posts, I mean, your posts are going to fail a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, I think if you just put chain link up, uh, GAW or GBW, and could put up with a rusty looking fence over time, I, I mean, yeah. I, to where it rusts enough, it just lets go of itself. Yeah. I mean, you're probably 40, 50 years. I mean, oh, in, in all least. honesty. At know, least. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this fence was installed in the 60s. Now, not all of it is still standing. A lot. Of, the number one uh, contributor to this fence being replaced is cars running into it. Yeah. So it's right next to a street, and things happen. So yep. cars end up going through this fence. But there's probably a good 20-foot stretch that's still there. Yeah. And I, I drive by about once a month going out to my folks' place. I thought, oh. Still there. <laughs> Grandpa must have known what he was doing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but it, it would be interesting to see the actual life, useful lifespan of the chain link. And yeah. I think you're right. I, I think when, when that fence does fail, I think we're going to see it at the post, yep. right at the post where they meets the ground or meets the concrete if the concrete's raised. Yeah. So what what else is there to talk about galvanized before versus galvanized after weaving? We've talked about kind of the rust points and the burrs. Yeah, I think... Uh, I I would say this, so in the GBW and GAW world, a lot of the GBW guys are people like me, self, you know, own businesses, uh, family businesses, and they buy in the strand and weave it together where, you know, it's Merchants Metals and Master Alco that have the GAW, you know, pits and they're the ones that kind of push that product. Sure. Um, so I think by buying GBW, you're kind of, you know, keeping money in your communities, you know, giving it to family kind of people. Yep. Uh, when you're buying GAW, you're kind of sporting corporate. Sure. I mean, sure. not that it's a bad thing, it's just, you know. Something to think about. Yeah, though. absolutely, absolutely. Well, and that's, that's an interesting point because that's going to lead into the video we're getting ready to record right after this one. And uh, the, the manufacturers and producers of today and tomorrow look a bit different than the manufacturers of, of yesteryear, I guess. Yeah. But, but that's a good point in that you know, by, by buying wire, you know, in this situation from Brent Manufacturing, 
you're supporting a family, yeah. right? And and a series of families. Absolutely. We had this conversation last night in that, you know, you and I are kind of are alike in that we view our our work families as like extended families. Yeah. You know, and that, that became pretty clear as I watched you interact with your guys and gals here. But I think that's important. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it, and not saying anything about corporations, but uh, I like when I'm, when I'm making my purchasing decisions, I think that makes a difference. I really do. Absolutely. Well, guys, what do you think on the galvanizing before versus galvanizing after weaving? I'm sure there's some thoughts on this subject, and they're probably already in the comments. Yeah. But if you haven't made a comment, let me know what you think. I'm always in the comments. Uh, I respond as quickly as I can. Now, sometimes you guys put a bunch of comments in there, and it takes me a little bit to get back to. Uh, but I always end up scrolling through in the evening and seeing what you guys are talking about. Well, guys, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. I'll see you next time.